So welcome, this is CAIE paper, May, June 2007, M1 paper. We shall try to solve all the questions. It says a particle is sliding up the plane. The initial velocity is 2.5, final velocity is uh, 1.5. So let me write that one. Final velocity is 1.5 and the distance from A to B is 4 meters. So distance is equal to 4 meters. Is asking what is the deceleration. So A equal to question mark. So what am I going to do? I am going to use v square is equal to u square plus 2as. So v is 1.5 square is equal to 2.5 square plus 2 times a times s is 4. So from there I get the value of a which is 1.5 square minus 2.5 square by 2 times 4. So it becomes negative 0.5 meter per second square. So but it has been asked deceleration. So deceleration is equal to positive 0.5 meter per second square. Next, find the value of alpha. So for this, only one simple formula we have to use. Forward force minus backward force is equal to ma. Backward force is equal to ma. Forward force, because nothing is being pulled, minus 0. Minus backward force will be mg sin alpha along an inclined plane is equal to ma. So from there, m and m gets cancelled so acceleration is minus g sin alpha so acceleration we got minus 0.5 is equal to minus 10 sin alpha so sin alpha is equal to 0.5 by 10 so alpha is equal to sin inverse of 0.05 take the calculator and do that one it becomes 2.9 degrees that's going to be the answer for the first one now second one Two forces of equal magnitude, 8 newtons, acts on a point OA and OB. The angle between them is theta. The resultant of the two forces is 9. In the direction of OA, in the direction of OA, find the value of theta. So, this 8 newtons, this one. So, let me resolve that one into two components. 8 cos theta and the vertical will be 8 sin theta. So, now total what the horizontal forces is nothing but what? 8 plus 8 cos theta. 8 plus 8 cos theta. That should be equal to the total component of the forces is 9. From there, 8 cos theta is equal to 1. Cos theta is equal to 1 upon 8. Theta is equal to cos inverse 1 upon 8. Pull the calculator. Shift cos inverse 1 divided by 8 should be giving you 82.8 degrees. So theta is equal to 82.8 degrees. Find the magnitude of the resultant of the forces. He is asking us to find the magnitude of the resultant of the forces. So we know that horizontal force which is along x-axis is 9 newtons. That's okay. Now along vertical one. Vertical one. We have vertical one. We can see 8 sine theta. 8 sine theta so which is equal to 8 times sine 82.8 degrees so my resultant will be equal to square root of x square plus y square this is y so which will be 9 square plus 8 sine 52.8 whole square so I pull the calculator 9 square plus 8 times sine of that answer whole square. So when I do that one in the calculator, I'm quickly doing that one in the calculator, I should be getting the answer as 12. 12 newtons, that's going to be the answer. Question number 3. A car travels along a straight horizontal load with an increasing speed until it reaches a maximum speed of 30 meters per second. The speed is 30 meters per second. The resistance of the motion is equal to R newtons and the power is 18 kilowatt. Find the R. So, same forward force minus backward force is equal to MA. Forward force will be power by velocity. Minus backward force is resistance R is equal to MA. So, what is a MA? But what is he telling that? 
is increasing speed until it reaches like a maximum speed then it's a constant speed constant speed means should be equal to zero acceleration should be equal to zero once it reaches the maximum speed of 30 there is no what is this acceleration at all the resistance in motion is constant and there is no acceleration so therefore ma should be equal to zero so power is 18,000 divided by velocity is 30 minus r this is equal to zero from there r is equal to 600 newtons so once it is traveling with the maximum speed it continues to maintain the maximum speed in that case there will be no acceleration so therefore i have considered acceleration as equal to zero now given that the car has a mass 1200 find its acceleration at the instant when its speed is 20. so in this case now again i'm going to use the same thing forward force minus backward force is equal to ma but this time there is the speed is now at 20 and it is still increasing at that particular instant what is the acceleration is being asked so forward forces power by the velocity which was 20 minus backward forces resistance is 100 ma 12,000 1200 times a from here a i get it as 0.25 meter per second square question number four two particles p and q of masses 0.6 kgs and 0.2 kgs respectively are attached to the lens of an inextensible string which passes over a smooth fixed peg the particles are held at rest with the string at dot both the particles are ahead of 0.9 meters the system is released the particles move vertically calculate the acceleration and the tension before p reaches the ground so p so p is 0 0.6 kgs so let me draw that one straight line 0 0.6 g whereas q is 0 0.2 g tension upwards towards the pulley now p comes down and q goes up so the same concept again see we are using the third sum with the same formula forward force minus backward force is equal to ma so my forward force in case of p will be because it is coming down 0.6 g backward force is tension is equal to 0.6 a in case of q it's going up tension is a forward force 0.2 g is the backward force is equal to 0.2 a solve these two equations tension tension gets cancelled 0.4 g is equal to 0.8 a a is equal to 5 meter per second square substitute that a in this one tension minus 0.2 g is 10 is equal to 0.2 times 5 so tension is equal to 3 newtons so i got tension so tension has been got acceleration also has been got okay so that's the first part second part the time taken for p to reach the ground so what was the distance the distance is 0 0.9 meters okay and so distance is 0 0.9 meters its initial velocity is zero acceleration just now we got 5.5 meter per second square so what's the time s is equal to ut plus half a t square time we don't know so 0 0.9 is equal to zero times time plus 1 upon 2 times 5 times t square from there i get the value of t as 0 0.6 seconds that's the answer question number five a lorry of mass 1000 12500 kgs travels along a straight road a b and a straight inclined plane b c b c is 500 meters speeds at a b c are given this is at a this is at b this is at c the work done against the resistance of the motion as travel from a to b is 5000 joules find the work done by the driving force work done by the driving force as it travels from a to b so a to b so we have to use TWD is equal to delta KE plus delta PE plus WDF. What is all this? TWD means total work done. WDF work done against friction. 
work done against friction so we have to find twd what is delta ke delta ke means change in kinetic energy final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy initial kinetic energy delta pe what is delta pe final potential energy minus initial potential energy so total work done has to be calculated so let us do step by step total work done has to be calculated delta ke final kinetic energy half times 1000 what is the weight on 12500 12500 times velocity from a to b we are calculating a to b so 25 square minus initial kinetic energy 12500 times 17 square then delta p delta p will be zero because it is moving on the straight line there is no change in the potential energy then work done against the friction what is the work done against the friction it has been given in the question as 5000 so plus 5000 so when i simplify that i will be getting 7100 kilojoules that's going to be the total work done now coming to the second part as the lorry moves from b to c the resistance of the motion is 4,800 newtons. The work done by the driving force is 3,300 kilojoules. Find the height about this one. So, what is the height he is asking us to find it out? As it is going from B to C. So, from B to C. Same formula. So, let me, what I can do is pull this one. Let's make it small. This one was the first part. We will leave it there. I am going to use the same formula. Total work done. Total work done is nothing but how much it is? 3,300 kilojoules. 0, 0, 0. Is equal to delta Ke. 1 upon 2, 12,500 times 17 square final minus initial 12,500 times initial is 25 square because I'm talking about B to C so this is at C this is at B then I go for change in the potential energy final potential energy so what is the final potential energy so what am I going to do I am going to draw a straight line if this height is H so final potential energy is M G is 10 mgh. I don't know minus initial potential energy. I take it as zero because it is at the level ground B. So I can write it out over here. This is at C, this is at B. Then work done against the friction. What was the work done against the friction? He has given it as plus 4800. Now I have to simplify this and get the value of H. So Directly, I write it at 12,500 times G is 10 times H is equal to 3300000 minus 4,800 minus 1 upon 2 times 12,500 times 17 square plus 1 upon 2 times 12,500 times 25 square. So let me pull that by a calculator. 3, 3, zero zero three zeros followed by two zeros minus four thousand eight hundred minus zero point five times twelve thousand five hundred times seventeen square minus zero point five times twelve thousand five hundred times twenty five square divided by if i bring this uh, one thousand this one also over here divided by one two five three zeros this should be giving me 24 meters so h is equal to 24 meters that's going to be the answer question number six a particle p starts from rest a particle a and travels in a straight line is coming to rest after 10 seconds the velocity time graph is given the velocity is given by this formula find the greatest velocity show that the greatest velocity during the 10 meters per second is during this motion is 10 meters per second he is asking us to prove that the greatest velocity and the displacements from a to 
from a of p and q are same as when equal to 10 so what is that question so what is that let us read the question carefully a particle p is starting from rest so initial velocity is zero at a point a and travels in a straight line okay then comes to rest again after 10 seconds the velocity time graph of p consists two straight line motions the particle q starts from rest this is for p this is for q a particle q starts from rest at a at the same instant p and travels in the same straight line as p the velocity of q is given by for q it is 3t minus 0.3t square the displacements of a from a of p and q are same when t is equal to 10 so displacement of p should be equal to displacement of q that is the meaning of the question so how should i find out displacement of a and displacement of q okay so now displacement of p should be equal to displacement of q when t is equal to 10 so for q the velocity is given as 3t minus 0.3t square so if at all i want to find the displacement i do the integration 3t minus 0.3t square times dt so displacement of q is equal to 3t squared by 2 minus 0.3t cubed by 3 plus c okay so now what plus c let me write c carefully so it becomes now i want to try to find the distance at 0 to 10 so at 10 at 10 seconds because at 10 seconds right so i just substitute 10 so sq at 10 will be equal to 3 upon 2 times 10 square minus 0 0.3 upon 3 times 10 cube 10 cube this is the distance traveled in 10 uh, if at all uh, i want to do minus between 0 to 10 i will do it out at the limits maybe i apply the limit 0 to 10 to make it easy to understand 0 to 10 seconds so in that case i need not do the c value so 0 to 10 minus 0 will be 0 minus 0 so this becomes 3 by 2 times uh, 100 1.5 times 100 is 150 minus 0 point times 100 is 100 so 50 meters so it has traveled 50 meters so q has traveled 50 meters but in the question what has been given sp is equal to sq so sq is 50 meters so sp also 50 meters sp is in the form of a triangle so area of a triangle is half base into height is equal to 50 half base is again 10 seconds which is the time and height h is equal to 50 height h instead of h what i can do it out is height is v so i can consider height as v so from there 5v is equal to 50 so v is equal to 10 meters per second so this is the greatest speed reached by p find the value of t in the interval 0 to 5 for which the acceleration of q is same as that of the acceleration of p so first of all 0 to 5 seconds so this part what is the acceleration of p for acceleration of p 0 to 5 initial velocity is 0 final velocity just now we got 10 meters per second time is equal to 5 seconds so i use v is equal to u plus 80 from there 10 is equal to 0 plus 5 a a is equal to 2 meter per second square so this only will be the acceleration of q2 acceleration of q is also equal to 2 meter per second square so i know the velocity of q is formula 0.3t minus 0.3t squared 3t minus 0.3t squared so if at all i want to know the acceleration i do the derivative 3t derivative is 3 this is become 0.60 but acceleration is how much 2 is equal to 3 minus 0.60 so 0.60 is equal to 1 so from there t is equal to 1.67 seconds that's going to be the answer finally question number seven two light strings are attached to the block of mass 20 kgs the block is in equilibrium the 
horizontal surface AB, the strings make 60 degrees and 30 degrees on either side of the block. The tensions are T newtons and 75 newtons. Given that the surface is smooth, find the value of T and magnitude of the contact force. So, what am I going to do? I am going to take first 75 newtons. 75 newtons is the green color one. I resolve this one into two directions. So this becomes 75 cos 30 and this becomes 75 sine 30. Similarly, I take T newtons. It becomes horizontal and vertical T cos 60 and T sine 60. Now, because the particle is in equilibrium, so left side force should be equal to right side force. So left side forces T cos 60 should be equal to 75 cos 30. From there, I get the value of T as 130 newtons. That is T. Now I need to know the magnitude of the contact force. What is the meaning of contact force? So there will be a contact force R which is acting upwards. That value is being asked. It is being balanced by its weight. Where is the weight? Weight is 20 G. So what are also upward forces equal to downward force because they are in equilibrium. So upward force is R and 75 sin 30 is upward force. T sin 60 is also upward force whereas the downward force is just only 20 G. So R should be equal to 20 G minus 75 sin 30 minus 130 sin 60. From there, R is equal to 50 newtons. That's it. Things. Is there any eighth question? Nothing else. That's all. That's the answer for question number seven. So that completes the paper. CIE, May June 2007. Everyone, all the questions. See you in the next paper.